The World Health Organization is very interested in the health impact of electromagnetic fields and especially radio frequency fields as they relate to uh, mobile telephony and other wireless networks. From the literature that has been published so far, it appears that uh, the exposure from base station does not seem to pose health risks to uh, people in the neighborhood. Um, in terms of mobile telephony usage, um, this is where there has been a question uh, from the part of the scientist. And uh, so far, the epidemiological studies that have looked at the issues have not uh, seen any health effects from short-term use of mobile telephone. Do you believe that the Romanian situation is different to the other countries in Europe or in the world? No, I suppose the Romanian uh, uh, situation is very similar to the rest of the world, both in terms of coverage of exposure to electromagnetic fields, as well as to the standards, which are the European standards, and also in terms of public concern, this is, uh, these are questions that come up uh, from the public in many countries, but that are being dealt with um, uh, differently from one country to another. There is some uh, dangerous for the common population in the big cities to have some uh, a lot of radiation uh, compared to the rural area or other uh, part of the countries. Actually, this is a very good question because it has been shown that in cities, even though you have more base station, the levels are actually often lower than in rural areas that have coverage because then the base stations are uh, more sparsely uh, placed and therefore the uh, emissions are higher. So first, to put this work into context, I want to start with a general introduction about the World Health Organization. Um, it is the international agency within the United Nations system that is responsible for health. And we um, support very much and promote health research. And through WHO, governments, the member states, can tackle global health problems. Uh, for example, diseases like SARS, outbreaks, like avian flu, um, and major diseases such as malaria and HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis, and so on. But the first thing is to do the research, and many countries have programs in that field. In Europe, uh, in particular, there are a large number of countries, for example, the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, France, and I'm sure I'm missing some, that have dedicated funds from the government and from the industry to look into the health effects of uh, radio frequency fields. And they use our research agenda to promote uh, research in this field. Now, once they do the research, they then publish it. And it has to be published in very well-known journals with peer review before we would ever look at them. You can't just write an abstract in a conference and uh, be analyzed by WHO. Then, at the country level, there is often an assessment of the risk. This can be done at the national level or at the international level, where we look at the whole literature and try to understand if there are some trends. Because, as you know, and as the media knows very well, there are a lot of papers showing, for example, no effect, and then a few papers showing some effect. But very often in the media, only the positive papers come to uh, publication. So we develop this uh, very uh, thorough assessment. The one for radio frequency fields has not been done yet, and we expect it to be done within a couple of years. These are 500 pages documents with thousands of, uh, of uh, references. So in terms of the uh, standards, WHO does not develop electromagnetic field standards. But what we do is that we recommend guidelines for basic health protection. So when we talk about standards here, in the context of human health, we talk about exposure guidelines, that is, limits 
for the electromagnetic fields at the level of the body. And there are two main um, commissions that look at this, ICNER and IEEE in the United States. And the guidelines are over the whole frequency range and apply differently for the general public and for workers in the field. So for example, for radio frequency or um, the people who are uh, you know, mounting the base stations. Um, what we provide is a database of standards around the world because different countries have different, uh, different limits. And uh, we would be glad to get the information from Romania to include in our database uh, in terms of your know, standards and regulations. And finally, I just want to show you that we have a lot of different documents, some simple documents to read by the general public and some very uh, scientific data as well that you can all find on our website. And uh, I would like to end with some practical recommendations. The first one is that we very strongly recommend to adopt international health-based standards. For Europe, this is actually a recommendation from the European Commission. For the general public, you have the recommendation of 1999 that I believe is in place in Romania already. Uh, for the uh, workers, there will be a directive, a European Commission directive that was supposed to be implemented this month, but it has been uh, uh, pushed back for, by four years to uh, 2012. So this is in terms of European standards. The most important part, I guess, is to ensure compliance with the standards. Because in one way it's relatively simple to adopt standards but not to have a process to look that there is compliance with the standards. Then, to establish a public information program, and uh, I think you are starting that today, and uh, I congratulate you on this, uh, on this endeavor. And uh, finally, to have a dialogue with the stakeholders before installing new facilities. We have seen that in many countries, the problem has been base stations, and as we said, this is not a health issue, but it's a risk perception and dialogue issue. And so we recommend that there is a dialogue between the operators and the neighborhood before installing, for example, new base stations.